Thursday workdays in October were always jam-packed with getting ready for fall, planting, late summer harvests, and there was always some encounter with bugs, critters. Check it out. Raccoons were here tonight and all of the dark brown spots you see is raccoon activity. So I've already put extra seeds in here last week where there was activity. And now there's more digging over here, disrupting of seeds, plants. They seem to go right beside the plants, except for there. So it's really hard to protect this 50 square feet almost. However, here, as you've seen in the past, I protect this when I first put my seeds in and they leave it alone. I have carrot seed planted in there. First order of business on Thursday is always harvesting. These Listadia de Gandia eggplants were stunning. Eric took this one home. And I found a few more colorful items. Okay, in this little bed I am planting garlic that I bought at the National Heirloom Expo. And I'm gonna have to look up the variety because it wasn't on the bag or the receipt. But I'm pretty sure that this is soft neck because that's what's most appropriate for Southern California. And I've just placed the cloves. You unpeel the bulb and you place the cloves. Because this doesn't get a ton of sun, I'm giving them plenty of space. And then I'm going to push them down two inches with the, this is the bottom and this is the top, the pointy thing at the top, and cover it up. Now I have another garlic video online, please check that out, it's one of my late bloomer episodes from season three I think. That goes into more detail about planting garlic. But I'm going to bury all these. This particular bed did not have irrigation and it was bone dry. So we just put six gallons of water, mixed it in. It was like sand. It was so dry. And I've used a little bone meal, some minerals, and that's all I'm doing. So we'll see how that does. This particular bed is within 15 feet of my birch tree and the birch roots want all the water and they come to the surface so we had to put a weed barrier underneath this bed it's about seven or eight inches down so it should be good for deep enough for garlic and then i'm going to put wood chips on top of this probably have to cover it in wire Keep the raccoons from digging. They're just looking for grubs, and there aren't any grubs in here, so maybe they won't, if they don't smell any, they won't dig. Still, I think it's a good precaution to put some fencing down to protect it because the raccoons can get pretty aggressive. And I already had this one little something going. I guess that's garlic from last year. Okay, now we're going to add some wood chips, some fencing, and we'll be done with this, and we'll just leave this. Set up the irrigation and leave it till July, June. It's right underneath the lemon verbena and the lemongrass, and it smells wonderful here. Somehow I managed to get a double layer of fencing over this half circle. Better this way. Back in August, 
We had potted up this cardamom plant that I got from Sharon's Natural Gardens to one of my huge clay pots. It doubled in size in two months. After lunch, we split the plant three ways. It's always been an issue to find something right for these pots. After the roots recover from shock, I expect them to do well. It was time to cull plants and clean up the driveway garden. I will be covering this garden block from start to finish in a separate video. Eric had to get the tall ladder to reach the squash vines that had grown up my neighbor's trees. There's one little squash there at the top of the screen. When he told me the vine was dead, I had him cut it. Here are a few other remains of the day. This little melon was found behind a pot. After the cleanup, only the West Indian gherkin, the sweet potatoes, and two watermelon plants were left. We removed 19 pots. The next grim task was removing all the infected leaves from my pepper plants. An upcoming video will go into detail about my pepper adventure. Back in the front yard, we set up irrigation for the new garlic bed. I tied into a line on the neighbor bed. One problem I have with irrigation is the entire front yard comes off of one gauge and the lines are at different heights. Water pressure either varies or the sprinkler heads get clogged. Either way, some beds get more water than others. Well, it's dripping, but it's not spraying. Look at this one. This one is spraying. And that's coming off the exact same no, it's not. It's coming off this one. No, it's Hmm. But still, it's dripping all around. That's working okay. But this, this is, is okay. not working. No, this is working. See? Maybe change it. I didn't realize until I had it all done no. that the emitters on the brown tubing are spaced water. one foot apart. It's ridiculous. Which means a lot less water. This one is working nicely. And I'm trying to get it to go down here. To water the, uh, this is all getting beat up here. Cilantro. Have a little permaculture thing going here, like Tory in uh, South Carolina. Okay. After Eric left, I planted these shallots right down the middle of the back 40. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Please give me that like and share this channel with your friends and I'll see you in the next video.